Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 21. Jeremiah 6, 16 to 21. Jeremiah is known for a prophet of Tyre. Um, and he was the one who knows God's heart and intention and cry out for uh, salvation and redemption for his people. So we're going to hear God's word all together. Jeremiah 6, 16 to 21. Here's the word of God. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, and walk in it, and find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk in it. I set watchmen over you, saying, Pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not pay attention. Therefore hear, O nations, and know, O congregation, what will happen to them. Hear, O earth, behold, I am bringing disaster upon this people, the fruit of their devices, because they have not paid attention to my words. And as for my law, they have rejected it. What use to me is frankincense that comes from Shiva or sweet cane from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices pleasing to me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I will lay before this people stumbling blocks against which they shall stumble. Fathers and sons together, neighbor and friend shall perish. Amen. As we have journey, our journey, um, even though we trust in God, even though we are saved, uh, we often think that our work of faith is really difficult. Why is so? Uh, why is it like that? You know, we believe that God is almighty, right? God is uh, able to everything, and He knows everything. We, we trust in Him, we believe in Him, we worship Him. Why we are saying that our work of faith is really difficult? Sometimes... Frustrated. Why do we live with this frustrated heart? And tired. But will of God is, we got to be peaceful all the time. Right? We need to give thanks to God all the time. But somehow in, in our reality, our work of faith is really difficult. And sometimes it's really frustrating and tiring. We need to really think about it. Right? As a children of God, we are, if, we, if we are not saved, then that's natural, right? But we are saved, but we do have same kinds of um, difficulties and hardships just like non-believers. And we do have that frustrated heart. On top of that, if I take it further, why life-saving movement is not taking place in our lives? It's kind of too much for us to think about, but we need to think about it. If you married, then 
We're supposed to have children, right? The eternal life is in us, and God is with us. His concern, major concern, main concern is to save. But life-saving movement activities are not taking place in our lives. Then why is it so? You could bring it to that question too. Even though God promises uh, great things, amazing things, wonderful things for His children, uh, not many children of God are enjoying this. We know, we learned, but in our reality, we fall down. We get frustrated. Um, we need to know how to deal with this, our reality. How can we make God real in our reality? How can we bring God's promise, God's covenant in our reality and see fulfillment of God's word. God is living and active, right? Then He is working in us. Then we need to know how to experience it and confirm it in our reality. Other than that, we're going to go back to this. We are facing a lot of folk road. Um, you need to have like, you know, uh, a lot of moments that you need to choose. You need to determine, right? Folk in the Lord world. So, A or B. You have a lot of moments that you need to choose A or B. So, we are kind of confused. Which one is God's way? at least, as a children of God. The thing is, our life is a continuation of facing this world, cross world. We're going to continue to face this uh, folk in the world, in our work of faith. That's why verse 16, it says, This is what the Lord says, Stand at the crossroad and look and ask for the ancient path. We stand in this um, kind of reality all the time. Let me give you um, some example. There was a story of two friends. In their youth, uh, they were enjoying their lives. Know, hanging out together and going out, you know, and partying, you know, having party here and there. And they're on the way to really enjoy their lives. I don't know. They're on the way to go to club or bars or something like that. And they're on the way. Um, and they just saw the sign of church. You know, usually they put, you know, the title of the sermon coming Sunday, right? And he says, the wage of sin is death. And then they were on the way to, like, you know, enjoying their lives. And two friends made a two different decisions. One of them, forget about it. They were kind of mad at, you know, that title. And then one of them just, forget about it. I'm going to go anyway. And then he went. The other one was so kind of touched and, and shocked. And then he stopped by the church at the Sunday. And later on, 30 years later, the other one who went on, on his way, 
uh, look at the TV. And then he was able to see his friend become a president of the United States. Uh, his name is Cleveland. And he was the only president uh, who had a twice, like in you know, a presidency, 20, 22nd and 24th. He was the only one. And the other friend was in jail and looking at that TV. So that's the story of two friends. You know, God is going to speak to us. And then we're going to stand in the uh, kind of folk road, folk in the road. We need to. We are the ones who are choosing one or the other. Which way, which road, which path are you taking? Um, this is really significant. Um, we made a lot of choices. Um, and we're going to bear the fruits out of that. Right now, we don't see kind of clear distinction. But later on, as time goes by, we'll confirm that. So, uh, coming week you're going to face a lot of this kind of situation. You are standing at the crossroad. You are standing in a fork in the road. And you're going to choose one or the other. Matthew 7, 13. One of them is wide road. The other one is narrow Jeremiah 21, 8, the road of life. The other one is road of death. You don't see that in front, but you will see. You will find it out. Psalm 27, Genesis 20, 24, Job 8, it talks about the path and rocket path. Uphills, downhills, good ways, bad ways, path of the wicked, and path of the righteous, someone. Which path, which road are you taking right now? As you choose one or the other, you need to uh, keep in mind the things that you need to be aware of. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 33. Who went before you in the way to seek you out a place to pitch your tent, in fire by night, in the cloud by day, to show you by what way you should go. God is go ahead of time to look for, seek out the place that where you could pitch the tent, your tent. And he's the one who is guiding you with the pillar of fire, pillar of cloud. And he's the one who wants to desire to lead you a good path. We need to know who God is. And Proverbs chapter 4, 11, I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the path of uprightness. 1 Corinthians 12, 31, But earnestly desire the higher gift, and I will show you a still more excellent way. You, know, you need to think about who God is. 
instead of looking your reality and looking at God, you need to look at God first and then see the reality and choose. Psalm 37, verse 5, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will act. You are a child of God. No matter what, you need to start off with this. You are a child of God. You have Father who is leading you in a right place, in perfect place. Before you choose one or the other, remember who you are and who God is. Other than that, we'll be swayed by the ways of the world, standards of the world. So keep that in your mind. You are a child of God, and God is the one who desires to guide you and protect you. So hear His word. That's why our ministry is Selah. Before you choose something, Selah, stop and think. That's going to be the time of meditation. Instead of reacting to a certain situation right away, stop and think. Remember that who you are. Remember who God is. And then choose. If you look at the advertisement, sometimes commercials, if you get this, you know, stuff, products, your 10 years will be guaranteed. So, if you choose one little thing, they said, you can have different 10 years. I think it's more than that. It's kind of sad, but God's children sometimes choose to be blind or deaf. Verse 17, uh, verse 16. God says, stand at the crossroad and look and ask for the ancient path. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. But you said, will not walk in it. I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But you said, we will not listen. You know, we choose to be blind, deaf, in front of God's word and God's instruction. You know, it's kind of similar to what Apostle Paul said. In these days, a lot of people trying to hear what they want to hear. And they hire prophets and priests who itching their ears. You know what I'm saying? They want to hear what they want to hear. Like all kinds of encouragements. God's prosperity gospel. Like, you know, you'll be fine. You'll be great. Even though you are in the wrong path, wide road, they are saying that you are good. Pursue it. Just do it. There's not many brave God's prophet who could speak out, you know, God's message to them. Return. Repent. Make a U-turn and then go back. Because not many Christians, not many people want to hear that. God always plays signs and signals. It's kind of the same, but what I mean by it is sign is left turn, right turn, 
you know, or stop sign, right? Sometimes, you know, uh, one, of them, one of the road is going to be closed. So th- those kind of signs. Signals, red light, green light, one of them yellow, yellow light. So something like that, signals, stop, go ahead, or prepare to stop, or something like that. Um, God always places signs and signals for us. He wants to speak. He wants to communicate. Raise up prophets. He tried to communicate with his people, prophets. Here he said, watchmen. He's going to uh, place watchmen for his people. So he's going to place signs and signals for us constantly. Aged ages, throughout the history, God raised up his prophets and watchmen, and he placed the sign and signals for his people. But many times, in many cases, they rejected. I don't want to hear that. I want to continue to go where I'm going right now. I understand what you're saying, but I want to enjoy my life right now. And 30 years later, you will see the result. I don't want you to be that foolish child of God. Have you ever seen the, the people who take it as a part-time job, like, you know, shaking the, you know, the science banner of <laughs> the thing? Yeah. Of course, that, that's his first job. <laughs> Dancing around. <laughs> Sometimes, because of their moves, we don't read that sign. Advertisement. They're so good at dancing, right? Um, sometimes, you know, someone is wearing, what is that? The, what do you call? St- yeah, Statue of Liberty. <laughs> They're dancing around with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. God is raising up prophets. You know, shaking that signs for you to not miss that. But all the time, we just miss that and pass it. So, what do you need to do to, to, uh, this week? What kind of sign he is shaking in front of you? Keep that in your mind. God is the one who led his people with a pillar of fire, pillar of cloud. And he went ahead of them and looked for the place where they could pitch their tents. That's who God is. And he's giving you sign and signals. God's people chose to be blind and deaf intentionally. If you look at verse 20, what do I care about intense incense from Seba or sweet calamus from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Your sacrifice do not please me. So they had the form of godliness. They come to the church. They are a part of you know, church activities all the time. But intentionally, they chose to be blind and deaf. Why is that so? I try to meditate upon this word. Why? Do I, do I intentionally try to become deaf or blind to God's word? No, not really. 
I don't want to say that, that I'm doing it. God is, God's word is not beneficial to me right now. It doesn't make any changes right now. But I'm, t- you know, I'm you know, facing reality. I need to make a choice right now to get a benefit out of my choice, out of my determination. If I take God's word, God's side, I don't see any beneficial. I don't see any benefit. That's why we choose one over God's word. We listen to God's word. I'm not saying that we don't listen to it. We listen to it, but after all, we are rejecting it because it is not beneficial right away. You you see what I'm saying? Spiritual reality, spiritual blessings, spiritual promises are not visible. And worldly things are visible in front of us. It could give us benefit, right benefit. Instant benefit, instant rebate, then you are so excited about like instant benefit and uh, rebate, right? Then you're going to buy that. But God's word, spiritual blessings, spiritual promises are not instant rebate, instant reward, benefit. Oftentimes, we hear all the naggings from our parents, right? We, we don't like it. Why? Even though parents, in their mindset, in their hearts, it is really beneficial to you, but you are taking it as nagging. I don't like it. My dad tied me with a chair, right? A few weeks ago, I asked him, why did you do that? And none of my siblings experienced that. Only me. Why did, you, why did you do that? At the time, you know, I took it, and he didn't want me to really enjoy my life. Like, you know, playing games or sleeping or something like that. He said, since, you know, I grew up in a Christian family, so... You know, I was afraid of telling lies, right? So he said, this is the paper. If you want to go to bathroom, write a time or untie. And then, and then another time that you tied it up, tie you up with the chairs. I was kind of uh, hesitating. What should I do? And then they left for visitations and their ministry, right? Um, I cannot even lie, right? I, I, I don't want to lie. And I hold the chair with me and then <laughs> going around and then place it in front of the computer. Uh, I didn't untie that, right? So <laughs> I, I could say that. I didn't untie I didn't do anything. Um, I took it as a nagging. But all the time, my parents said, it is for you, not for me. You need to study. Instead of doing something else, you got to study for your future. I don't even see my future. That's why I don't see any benefit, instant benefit. So I took my own way. Because of our value system based on worldly standards. Think about it. Um, 24 7, if you calculate that 168 hours per week, is, right? 
Is it? Um, most of our time we're using for SNS. Uh, there are voices, like messages from SNS. We don't really notice that, right? You know, we closed out God's word and God's voice. We kind of wide open to worldly voices. And then we are still saying that, you know, please heal my imprint. That doesn't make sense. We're wide open to worldly voices, and those voices will be our imprint, our value system. That's why oftentimes we don't see instant benefit out of God's Word. That's why we choose one, something over God's Word. And then we, we, we give our eyes and ears to the false teaching, verse 13 and 14. From the least to the greatest, or are greedy for gain, prophets and priests alike all practice deceit. They dressed the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, where there's no peace. We turn our eyes, we turn our ears to fake comforts. You know, we are surrounded by these fake comforts. If you get this, you'll be happy. If you get this, you'll be content. Not at all. So, Jeremiah was a prophet of tears. He's crying and crying, weeping for his people. Because they are doing this. Intentionally. Reject God's word. God placed stumbling block in front of us. I think that's the sign sometimes. Signals. Verse 21, therefore, this is what the Lord says, I will put obstacles before, his, before these people. Parents and children alike will stumble over them. Neighbors and friends will perish. He's going to place obstacles, stumbling block in front of us. Like I said, why? We need to ask. Before you choose to be grumpy, complaining about situation, and choose something over God and God's word and God's promise, we need to ask why. Like I said, he's the one who guided us with the pillar of fire cloud in the wilderness. In verse 16, if you see that, Stand at the crossroad and look and ask for the ancient path. And he said, ask where the good ways and walk in it. You will find rest for your soul. He wants to provide rest for you. You're going to stand a fork in the road and then stop and think and look at it and seek the ancient path. So we need to time of asking why in our reality. Then you will find rest for your soul. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So even though he plays obstacles, it's not for what? Evil, for welfare. 
is for your future and hope. I know my plan for you. So he's not going to do anything evil for us, but welfare. Why? He is shouting to return to him. So he's giving signs and signals, like you know, obstacles, to make us to come back to him. So when you listen to God's word, and then when you stand in the fork in the road, and then ask and seek out, then you will see. God shouting to make you come back to him. And then he said, you know, he let Jeremiah shout, teach, proclaim, and write to make his people to come back to him. To make us experience and confirm God's power, protection, and working. Think about Exodus. Red Sea. He plays Red Sea in front of God's people, right? Why? To really shouting to them to come back. You are slaves. You turn away from me, and you became my slaves. He's shouting, you need to trust in me. You need to come back to me and experience his power. And he's working in our lives. So he's not giving you obstacles. He's not going to place stumbling block for you to make you fall for evil. But he wants to let you guys really experience and come from God's power, God's guidance, God's plan, God's heart. You see what I'm saying? And Jordan River, same thing. This is for the first generation of Exodus. And this one is 1.5 and second generation of Exodus. They needed to have these obstacles, these stumbling blocks, Red Sea, Jordan River. All of us, we need to pass through Red Sea and Jordan River. He's going to place it in front of us somehow in his perfect time schedule. Remember, all long time ago, not a period, but comma. You know, sometimes we take it as a period. That's it. But in God's term, in God's sight, that's comma. Your obstacles, all the signals, this is not a period. This is not the end of the story. To try to make you stop and think, Selah. That's the comma. If you don't stop, you'll be out of breath. Right? There, that's why we put commas in the sentence. So don't take it as a period. But take it as a comma. God wants to make you come back and to really think about who you are and who God is. Okay. Let me give you um, kind of application out of the text today. You're going to bear the fruits of your schemes. If you look at verse...
Verse 19, Here, you earth, I'm bringing disasters on these people, the fruits of their schemes. So this morning, God spoke to us, when you sow the seed and you will bear the fruits, whatever, what kind of sow, what kind of seed that you sow, you, that's what you're going to bear. That's the fruit of their schemes, our schemes. What do you sow? You're going to bear that fruit. When you are, when you stand a folk in the road, please do this. Look and see. And ask for the ancient path, which is Exodus. How God led his people. That's the path that God led his people. So, when you face some time of, you know, determination, before you choose something, before you do something, look clearly. Step back and then see. Try to see. And then ask for the ancient path. Salah. We are sometimes too busy to do this. Um, that's why we know we want to take you guys to Mammoth Lake. It's not for fun, just. I want you to really practice how to meditate upon God's Word and how to take Selah time, how to really stand and then look and ask for the ancient path. Ask for God's wisdom and God's guidance. Short period of time it will make you totally different future. The president, Cleverant, he just stopped by at the church. That's it. And he, ch you know, that changes his whole life. He was unique. This is for spiritual eyes. So we call it spiritual summit, right? This is going to be the fruits of meditation. Walk in it. Verse 16, stand at the crossroad and look. Ask for the ancient path. Ask where the good way is. And walk in it. Practically, realistically, actually, you walk in it. Obedience. Confession of faith. Even though sometimes you cannot even understand why, you just walk in it. Ask God and seek out His help, His wisdom, and walk in it. You know, for Jordan River, it was different. For the Red Sea, Moses just, you know, struck, strike, right? The Red Sea and then was split. For the Jordan River, was different. You need to why? You need to do what? Step on it. And then the Jordan River will be split into two. So that's the act of faith. So work in it. So um, how can we make God's Word living and active? And how can we see His fulfilling His Word, keeping His Word in our lives? 
Um, that's why in the scripture, there's two aspects. Indicative. Statement. With that statement, we need to meditate upon, ponder upon what it is. And then imperative. You need to do it. Commandment. Indicative, imperative. Indicative, imperative. You need to put it into action. That's why we give you challenges every week from last week. If we just tell you that, um, memorize Psalm 1, are you going to do that? No. Who's going to, you know, you know kind of see that you, you did it? No one will do it. But some of you, as we challenge you to post it with the video clip, that's why, even though it's hard, you know, girls, I was so impressed to see Michelle doing all the push-ups. Plank. Somehow, we memorize God's Word and do it. So, we're going to do the imperative to you guys for 10 weeks. So, follow. You know, we'll change your perspective, your imprints too. Instead of following fake comforts, you're going to hold on to God's Word and meditate upon it. Let's pray together. God is our Father. Um, God is our friend. He wants to lead us into the right path. He wants to really guide us. He wants to provide us the best thing. Many times, we don't really trust in Him. We trust our instinct. We trust our experiences. We trust opinions or the advice of the people. That's why we don't go back to the Scripture, God's Word, to really make my choice. Going to your friends instead of going to your God. Your Father. Blind cannot be lead blind. I want you to really make serious choice today. When I stand a fork in the road, I want to really stop and see and look at it and then ask for the ancient path and God's wisdom God's guidance and then whenever whatever he says walk in it obey Lord, would you uh, cultivate my heart my soul and my spirit, my mind, so that I could really listen to your word. To my eyes, to my ears, to you. Let's pray together.